Hey y'all, what's going on? Welcome to The Truth and Love. I'm Kimberly Nicole, and as always, you already know that I am so glad that you decided to stop by because this video is another video in this series that I have titled Mastering the Moment. And in this series, we've been taking a look at how Moses and the children of Israel handled some of those pivotal moments in their journey through the wilderness so that hopefully we can also learn how to better handle some of the pivotal moments in our own lives. And so in this video, we are going to be talking about something that I'm calling Meribah moments. And so we're going to just dive right in and we're going to fast forward in the story of Moses and the Israelites almost 40 years from where we left off in Exodus before. And we're going to meet up with them in the book of Numbers in chapter 20, verse 1. And there it says, in the first month, the whole Israelite community arrived at the desert of Zin, and they stayed at Kadesh. There Miriam died and was buried. Now there was no water for the community, and the people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. They quarreled with Moses and said, if only we had died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness that we and our livestock should die here? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? It has no grains or figs, grapevines or pomegranates, and there is no water to drink. Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and fell face down, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff, and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to that rock before their eyes, and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so that they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence, just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock. And Moses said to them, listen, you rebels, must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out and the community and their livestock drank. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, you will not bring this community into the land I've given them. Okay, so a lot to unpack here, right? So basically, we see that the Israelites, they are doing what we've seen them do before, right? In the midst of a crisis situation, they start complaining, they start grumbling, they start arguing with Moses. And you know what? By now, Moses has clearly had enough. Unfortunately, what we just read is that he let that frustration and he let his emotions get the best of him, which sadly ended up costing him big time. And so that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. We're going to be talking about those miracle moments in our own lives. It's those times when we are also tempted to allow frustration and to allow our emotions to keep us from being obedient to God. It is those times, you know, when we are just like, it's just too much. And, you know, we just want to go off. It's when we are ready to react out of our emotions instead of responding from a place of wisdom. And so the goal in this lesson is to prayerfully help us to come up with some strategies so that we can walk in obedience during those times and not be like Moses and fumble our blessings. Okay. So Here's the thing, y'all, like Moses, he started out with the right approach in this situation because we see right here in verse six, where it says that Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance to the tent of meeting and they fell face down and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. So we see them doing or we see him doing what we've seen him do before when he was facing a trial. He went before the Lord to seek his guidance and time and time again, the Lord showed up for him, answered his prayers, gave him wisdom, guidance, and instructions on how to handle whatever the challenges that they were facing. And so he already knew what to do, and he knew that God's track record for showing up for him was absolutely flawless. And so in verse 7, God tells Moses to take his staff and to go gather the people together. So here's the thing about that. God told him to take the staff. He did not tell him to use the staff. And that is why one of the is one of the important things for us to remember in life is to be mindful in the midst of a crisis that just because we have something at our disposal to use, 
That does not necessarily mean that God wants it to use it, right? We see Jesus modeled that for us when he was facing the ultimate crisis situation, when they were preparing to crucify him. They were taunting him and they were asking him if he was really the Messiah, why didn't he just save himself from that situation? And he told them that, you know what? He could call down a whole legion of angels to fight for him on his behalf if he wanted to, but he knew that that was not what the father was calling him to do in that moment. And so we know that Jesus already told us that he didn't do anything that the father didn't tell him to, right? And the thing for Moses is that in a previous similar situation when they didn't have water back in Exodus 17, God did tell him to use a staff in order to bring forth water from that rock. But just because God had him use it before didn't mean that he wanted him to use it in this situation. And so the truth of the matter is that it is almost instinctive for us to default to use that thing that has yielded results for us before, especially in a tough situation, right? Because <clears throat> in order for us to walk fully in his plans and his purposes for our lives, we have to remember that one, the results are not our job, obedience is, and two, just because God calls us to do something one way in one season doesn't mean that he wants to do it the same way in a new season. He might want to do something different. So here's an example, right? Like somebody might have a way with words and you know how to talk your way out of a crisis, but God might call on you not to lean on that gift and gab in a certain situation. Like he might ask you to be quiet. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that gift that he has blessed you with. It's just like, you know, the same way he blessed Moses with the staff. It's just that he might want to work it out a different way in a different season for you, right? And so if you go back and you read Exodus 17, striking the rock was actually what God did tell Moses to do the first time that they ran into the situation. But this time he told him to speak to the rock. So when Moses and Aaron get back and assemble all of the people together, he says, listen, you rebels, what must we bring you water out of this rock? Which that is where he really messed up, y'all, because God told him to speak to the rock, not to speak to the people. And when we are facing a tense situation, some of us also need to learn how to stop speaking to people out of our frustration and instead begin speaking to that situation and declaring what God has said about it. Like, I really feel like I want to say that again, okay? So when we are facing a tense situation, some of us need to learn how to stop speaking to people out of our frustration and instead begin speaking to that situation and declaring what God has said about it. And in verse eight, God said, speak to that rock before their eyes and it will pour out its water. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so that they and their livestock can drink. Like God had already given him that authority to speak to that situation, to bring about the result that he was looking for. And we know that death and life is in the power of the tongue. God has given us the authority to speak to some situations in our lives in order to bring about the answer and the provision that we have been looking for. So what is the point? and wasting our words on people that really don't have the authority or the power to bring about the change that we are after, or even worse, people that ultimately serve as more of a distraction and a deterrence from our promise. And trust me, if you are anything like me, you have definitely fallen into that trap before because it's really easy to do, right? When we're, when, especially when we're in our feelings. And we have to remember that Moses was probably dealing with an extra layer of grief from having just lost his sister Miriam. I mean, like this was his sister, like the same sister that helped to ensure his safety and to make sure he was okay when he was just a little baby, right? And so even the scripture does mention that they had some differences later on down the line, like that was still his sister and that was still one of his partners in leadership. And so he's dealing with the loss of her and of course dealing with the Israelites. And I know that there's somebody out there like me who can relate to those times in our lives when it seems like, you know, we've just got negativity coming at us from every angle. And what God has taught me over the years through the many times that I have fallen short is that in order to help ourselves in our attempt at not letting our emotions get the best of us, we have to be able to recognize those times when our emotional and our spiritual guards are down. Those times when the weight of things going on make us that much more susceptible to making emotionally based decisions instead of being spirit led and operating in wisdom. So just like in Matthew 4, 
when Jesus was in the wilderness after fasting for those 40 days and 40 nights, the enemy, he will always, always try to come and catch us slipping when we are at our weakest moments. And that is when we need to be fortified with the word of God so that we can combat his lies and his tricks. And that is when we need to go before the Lord and we need to tell him what we're dealing with. And that is also when, you know what, we need to have somebody. We need to have someone we can talk to, someone we can ask to pray for us. And here's the other thing. We sometimes might need to just take a minute. Like we might just need to step back from that situation long enough to get to a place of peace before re-engaging. That way we can move forward in wisdom instead of moving forward in our feelings like Moses did in this scenario. And so something that I think is really, really important to point out about Moses' situation is that it got him the immediate results that he wanted, right? Like, even though he struck that rock, instead of speaking to it like God told him to, water still flowed from the rock. But here is the thing. Sometimes we can make the mistake of thinking that just because we got the result that we were after, that God is okay with our disobedience. So, for instance, you know what? Just because cussing that person out got you the immediate result that you were after, i.e. got them up off of your back, that does not mean that God is pleased. And it also does not mean that, you know what, later on down the line, there will be consequences. And even if, the, if, even if in the short term you got what you wanted, um, there's still consequences, right? Because regardless of the immediate result, disobedience always has consequences. And sometimes it's clear right away what it will cost us. And sometimes it might take a little while in order to reveal itself. So why in Proverbs 14, 12, the Bible teaches us that there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. And that doesn't always mean physical death. Like it could really mean the death of a relationship or, you know, the death of your reputation or any number of things. And unfortunately for Moses, the death was the death of a really big opportunity for him to lead the people into the promised land. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys, like this one has always kind of got to me a little bit because I'm just like, wow, Lord, like how is it that Moses has been, you know, leading these people who were constantly complaining about him and arguing with him and he was leading them faithfully for years. And this one mistake ended up costing him like the whole promise. You know, it's always just felt a little bit harsh to me, you know what I'm saying? But as I was studying this, I believe the Lord was showing me that for what God was ultimately looking to do through and for the children of Israel, that level of self-reliance and pride that Moses has started operating in could not go into the promised land. You know, that same level of faith and humility that he had shown in seasons past was the same level and uh, level of faith and humility that he would need for the next season. And Operating in faith and humility is what God wants from us too, because when we allow those mirror moments to cause us to get in our feelings and start relying on ourselves to get those results, we are basically telling God that we do not trust him to fight our battles for us. Because you see, back in Exodus, when Moses first struck the rock, God told him that he would stand before him. Like God had always stood before him. So wisdom and humility would have helped him to remember that and to trust that this time was not going to be any different for him. But unfortunately, instead, he allowed pride to puff him up and started speaking as if it was him doing the work and not God. And when we find ourselves in those moments when we want to get puffed up in our own pride, we also need to remember who stands before us. We need to remember that if God is for us, who can be against us? And we need to remember the scripture that says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. When we remember that it is God who fights our battles, when we allow him to, then we can relax and we can focus on being obedient and allowing him to do the rest. And so, listen, that's really good news, right? But here's the even better news. We know that Moses, he messed up when he struck that rock instead of speaking to it. But is there anybody else who knows that we have a rock? whose name is Jesus, who was struck and crucified for our sins to cover us when we mess up. And he is also our rock that we can build our lives on and that we can speak to. Moses and the Israelites, they got water to quench their thirst from that rock. He is living water and from him flows everything that we need to live the lives that God has called us to. 
And God is so full of grace and so full of mercy for those times when we fall short. That's why he died for our sins, because he already knew that we would miss the mark and that there would be times when we would let our emotions get the best of us. But praise the Lord that through him, our sins are forgiven and that we can continue to grow and to learn how to be led by his spirit during those moments of weakness. And so with that, I really just want to encourage someone who might be dealing with the marital moment right now to go to God in prayer to speak to that situation and declare what God has said about it and to remember who stands before you. And when we put our trust in him, y'all, he is absolutely faithful to do just what he said he would do. And with that, let's just pray, okay? Lord, we are so grateful um, just for another opportunity to learn from your word. And we ask God that you would just help us in those moments of our frustration to trust you, God, to speak to the situation as you commanded us to and to trust that you are standing before us, God, and that you are ordering our steps. And please, Lord God, just continue to lead us and guide us into all truth through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we just say thank you now, even in advance. And it's these things we ask in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, thank you so much again for stopping by. If this video has blessed you in any way, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Please be sure to share it with somebody else that you think it might be a blessing to and go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated on new videos as they come out. All right. So until then, be blessed and be encouraged. Thanks. Bye bye.